Our next speaker is Philippe Karadek. Philippe is the Vice President of Public and Government Affairs of Danone North America, the North American business unit of Paris-based Danone. He is responsible for federal, state, and local public and government affairs for Danone North America in the US, as well as the oversight of these subjects for Danone Canada, Danone Waters of America, Happy Family, and Nutritia North America. The title of Philippe's talk is Consumption-Oriented Strategies, Considering the Whole Value Chain. Welcome, Philippe, to the Food Forum. Thank you, Chris, and uh, thank you very much for having me on this panel. Appreciate the, the opportunity. So I'm going to start sharing my screen, hopefully. You guys... So first, uh, conflict of interest, uh, as you know, as uh, the introduction uh, of Chris, and thank you, Chris, for that introduction. Um, I work for Danone. Uh, I work for Danone for several companies of Danone uh, in the US, uh, Danone North America, Danone Waters of America, Nutrition North America, Happy Family, and we also have uh, in the US our worldwide uh, investment uh, team. Um, and you have some of the brands that we represent that are part of our portfolio. Some of them, hopefully, you know well, uh, some you may know a little bit less. Um, the the piece that I want to address during this, uh, this session uh, for me is to look at it from a, a set of consumer brands perspective. Uh, when we talk about the food systems and transforming them, obviously um, the system is set up right now that consumers are buying products and consumers are, are interested uh, in, in very often very much looking at the, the value proposition for these products. But, to start with, to address their expectations on food systems, credibility and authenticity are paramount. And in order to be credible and authentic, we need to uh, start looking at this from the full value chain and not solely from a, um, a piece that is just uh, um, in a small input. So we start with the agricultural input, even all the way to the feed of the cows that produce milk. Um, to the processing and the production of the food, uh, to the brand commitments, and at the end also to uh, the packaging circularity, uh, as you will, I will try to address. So starting uh, with the consumer's expectations. So full disclosure, uh, Danone is a, a member of the International Food Information Council. I happen to be currently the co-chair. Uh, and uh, as you know, the Food and Health Survey as uh, uh, takes the pulse of, of US consumers. And this is important because you see that, that uh, it, environmental sustainability in food purchased is around 60% important for consumers. And if you look to the right, it's really interesting because you see that the top pieces, top factors um, are label sustainable, uh, sustainably sourced, recyclable, recyclable packaging, labels non-GMO, labeled as being locally grown, labeled as organic and minimal packaging. So again, this is, this is from a, a nationwide uh, survey. What's interesting also, <clears throat> and, uh, and it was mentioned in Pradeep's um, uh, presentation and as well as also with Chris's introduction, the subject of regenerative agriculture is, is getting more and more, uh, more into the consumer parlance. And uh, that's quite interesting and quite important. And you, you, you will see, uh, that's something at Danone we try to address. So uh, talking about Danone, we have our 2030 goals. Uh, these are on the, on the screen right now. And I want to highlight one of them, which is that at Danone, we believe that we can serve the food revolution with partners. And this is something that uh, is gonna start tying in with uh, what Pradeep was presenting. And, uh, and specifically, in, in, I want to highlight one partnership that uh, Danone has been uh, intrinsic, uh, very much involved in, uh, in setting up, which is uh, a, uh, a partnership that we, we, a coalition that we started um, in, uh, and it's called One Planet Business for Biodiversity. So this, is, this, is this was launched um, last year uh, in September at the uh, UN Climate Action Summit in New York. It was part of uh, the French president's uh, One Planet Lab uh, framework, and it is hosted by the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. So 
that's really important. And you're, I'm going to explain who are the companies in, in the coalition in a second. But it's really focused on, um, on uh, uh, businesses looking at biodiversity with a specific focus on agriculture. The other piece also is that uh, we are trying to you to be catalysts in terms of uh, within the agricultural system uh, to protect and restore, restore bio, biodiversity, which was mentioned uh, by Pradeep. And we are trying to also look at partnerships with uh, farmers, producers, government, consumers, academia, and civil society. So this is very much, as you can probably see, very linked to what was presented just a second ago. So there are 21 companies, organizations with a combined turnover of over $5 billion that are part of this coalition. And you have some of the logos there. Google is part of it, uh, L'Oreal, Mars, Danone is a founding member, obviously Walmart uh, and, and others, uh, quite important, Unilever also. And there are three focus areas for the, what we call OP2B, One Planet Business for Biodiversity, regenerative agriculture, at scale up, uh, and I want to give some examples of what we do in the US in a second. Product diversification, and that's also to when we produce uh, things, we would like to drive species and genetic diversity. And obviously, when you're L'Oreal or when you're Mars or Danone or Unilever, you're going to have a lot of different ingredients that you can you can select from, and we are we are committed to increasing biodiversity there and uh, supporting high value eco ecosystems. So elim eliminate deforestation and enhance the management, restoration and protection of high value natural ecosystems. So those are the, the three focus areas. Now, focusing a little bit more on Danone. So Danone North America, we are the largest B Corp in the world right now. We hope to be uh, no longer that. We hope that someone bigger is gonna be uh, the largest B Corp, but um, Right now, we're still the largest. And obviously, by this, we mean, and I can explain later on in the panel uh, what we mean by, by, this, uh, by this subject. Uh, so we try to use to, to using the business as a force for good. So I want to explain one piece. And uh, again, it's very much related to what uh, Pradeep was related in terms of changing the business model. So. In the United States of America, most dairy companies are uh, buying their milk, uh, the, pro the processors are buying their milk from different uh, cooperatives, from different uh, actors. But it's basically driven by the, the price of that milk is pretty much driven by uh, the, the USDA prices and things like that. So at Danone, we decided for a portion of our portfolio because we wanted to reduce price volatility, we didn't want to be at the whim of suddenly China is buying milk or suddenly China is no longer buying milk. Um, but we also, so we wanted to reduce price volatility. We wanted also uh, to the point about biodiversity, test at scale changes in agricultural practices and look at for more sustainable farming. So we created a, a new model called cost plus model. And that means that, um, we are engaging one-on-one -on -one with farmers and we're setting up a system where <clears throat> we pay the cost of dairy production plus guarantee a margin. So the farmer technically um, is, knows exactly how much money will be left in their pocket at the end of the day when we buy their milk. And those are multi-year contracts. And this system also, <clears throat> excuse me, um, allows us on the box on the top right to, to suggest and work with the farmers on implementing at scale changes in agricultural practices without the farmer bearing the risk if that does not pan out. So one example that we've implemented and it's our soil health program. So I'm gonna give you a, a, few, a few pieces of we've implemented this. Um, so we're looking at different things, looking at healthier soils for future generation, biodiversity of the soil. Uh, we're looking at water resiliency and quality. We're looking at increasing carbon sequestration with more organic matter in the soil. 
and obviously, as I mentioned, ensuring fair and return uh, re returns per acre. Um, right now, this program um, has we started uh, a few years ago <clears throat> with uh, with only twenty five thousand acres in the U.S. and now we're about almost at sixty thousand acres that are under this program. And again, we're doing baseline work. We uh, suggest uh, working with the farmers, suggest improvements in the practices. Uh, this is data that the, that the farmers were not getting before. They're very appreciative of that. And uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to, uh, to implement uh, with their, and work with them so that they can implement practices such as low no-till, uh, crop cover, biodiversity, uh, buffers, uh, Etc. So this is one example. That example is very much related to the fact that we are able to do this for most of the most of the acreage I mentioned as a uh, cosmos model. So the the second big subject for us is obviously uh, the organic program. So you know, hopefully you know our brand Horizon Organic. So or Horizon Organic has uh, launched a new project called the Next Frontier Project, and. The, the ambition of uh, Horizon Brand is to pioneer a new type of organic dairy company that revitalizes the air we breathe, the animals we cherish, the farmers we support, and the soil beneath. So you see the, the theme there is very but much building also on the previous one. And I forgot to say, apologies, that the Soil Health Program does not focus solely on organic uh, acreage. It, it both is conventional, non-GMO, and organic uh, uh, types of systems. So the key point is we're trying with the Horizon Organic uh, brand to be the first carbon positive brand by 2025. So there are four subjects that are under the Next Frontier uh, project. <clears throat> One is to be carbon positive. Again, focusing on regenerative soil health, animal welfare, even beefing up beyond uh, where, where, where most people are and the big, big one, new one for us right now, which is farmer care and safety, including uh, not only just preventing accidents, but also mental health at this point. So you'll be able to read the, the whole details and whatnot, but it's really, really fundamental. The, a whole, at the farm level, a, a whole package of uh, focus here. And again, one more thing is because we know we can reduce, we can reduce, and we will reduce our, our footprint as much as possible. But at the same time, we know that we will not be able to fit to, to complete everything. So uh, we are going to create uh, uh, a market for uh, carbon offsets because that will be uh, necessary. I wanna finish with something at the consumer level. Again, uh, it's uh, packaging. When the consumer buys our products, uh, in the end, uh, what's left is the packaging. And so uh, we made a commitment. This is not a typo on the slide. We did announce this two years ago, so it's not just even with the recent uh, acceleration on the subject, but uh, we were already two years ago uh, there. So the, the packaging is a big paradox because uh, at the same time, we need packaging to protect food and beverages, but at the same time, it's the, the system is linear, which means that packaging creates a problem. So we wanna move from a linear approach, we make, we use, we discard, to make, reuse, and recycle. Um, there are three big uh, pillars to this. One is we will design our packaging for circularity uh, by 100% uh, reusable, recyclable, or compostable packaging. Um, we will also uh, streamline the, the use of the materials. Uh, we will reuse, recycle, or compost in practice. And uh, I will talk to you about that a little bit more in a second, as well as uh, uh, looking at recycled content material. We have some pretty strong commitments there. And also looking at new materials that are not fossil based, fossil fuel based. On the packaging design for circularity, back in 2018, we said that we will want to have 100% of our packaging to be reusable, recyclable, composable, uh, develop alternative use uh, and models. Uh, we'll move away from single use plastic as much as possible um, and uh, take actions that are also against um, 
unnecessary plastic packaging or problematic uh, pack plastic packaging. I want to see here. I want to share here one piece which is related to the um, to the investment in terms of uh, the strength of the infrastructure for collection. That's the one in the middle. Danone uh, is like several other big companies a partner, a, a, an investor in the closed loop uh, fund, which uh, focuses on collection, sortation, and second markets for recycled packaging. And then uh, we obviously want to also focus on consumer education. On the preservation of natural resources, we are specific commitments, which you can see here, uh, reach an average of 25% recycled material in all our plastic packaging by 2025. Um, for plastic bottle water, water bottles, which is a small business here for us, but big, big internationally, 100% recycled PET in uh, by 2025 for the Avion brand and actually in the US right now it's 100% already and uh, deforestation. So this is this is it. I'm uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that uh, you may have uh, during the during the session. Chris, thank you Philippe. I I have a a question and folks in the audience feel free to enter your questions into the the chat box. But there is a bit of a delay between the chat box and when we see the questions. So I'll start with the first question. And that is in your remarks, Philippe, you mentioned the idea of a B corporation. But I think that not everyone may be familiar with that. I know that I wasn't when I first heard about this topic. And it, it's a, I think it's important context. Yeah, thank you for that. So a little bit of uh, uh, language. Uh, there are two concepts. I only mentioned one of the two. I mentioned B Corp, but first, before we talk about B Corp, we could talk about public benefit corporation, or uh, there's even a French term, and I will mention an entreprise à mission, a mission enterprise. And uh, but public benefit corporation is a is a type of corporation that you can uh, create. Danone North America has been set up when it was created in 2017 um, as a public benefit corporation. And it means very simply that our charter says that we have a fiduciary uh, duty to bring in back uh, money to the investor. Or we, are, we only have in Danone North America one investor, which is Danone Global. Um, but so we, are, we, are due, we must return an investment, uh, have a return on investment by Danone. But we also have a public benefit. And the public benefit for us is to bring healthy food to as many people as possible with the lowest environmental impact. So that's our public benefit for Danone, Danone North America. Um, the second subject, I just mentioned Entreprise à Mission, Mission Enterprise, because Danone globally just became an Entreprise à Mission. So that was just voted in April. And that is the first time uh, that it is. Again, here in that case, we're publicly traded. And so we have many investors <laughs> and we were quite happy that they agreed with that change of charter for the global company. Um, and then B Corp, what is B Corp? B Corp is actually a certification, if you want, uh, by B Lab, which is based in uh, Philadelphia. And uh, there's a set of about 200 questions that uh, when you are, want to become a B Corp that you have to uh, rate yourself on. And it's a very, very wide set of things about uh, social, uh, social issues, uh, your, your suppliers, et cetera. And then if you get uh, a certain score, which is actually 80 out of 200, I know it doesn't sound like it's a very high, but it, it is extremely high, um, then you, you, you are entitled to the B Corp certification. So again, it's, it's focusing on the delivery of a, of a business as a force for good. And in some ways, there, there's some parallels there, I suppose, to some of the conservation programs that we use on farms too, like yes. the conservation stewardship program as, you know, an enhancement, try to go beyond, uh, beyond the average. Yeah, and, and big companies, I mean, uh, we are the largest uh, worldwide, uh, but the, the companies that uh, most people know very well that are B Corp would be uh, Patagonia, would be Ben and Jerry's. Um, you know, and, and others like that, but those are the, the other, the fellow, the fellow B Corp companies. We have also, uh, we have a, a little bit more time for questions and there are some audience questions. This one relates to no-till farming, but I might broaden it just a little bit to talk about conservation 
um, practices in general, because I'm, I'm not sure how much no-till farming is important within the suite of practices that Danone uh, is pushing for for their, their farms and the cost plus program. The question is no-till farming has been shown repeatedly to precipitate the problems associated with rots caused by fungi and wheat and corn over time. The change is slow, but it builds the pathogen in soils leading to yield losses. How do you find a balance? Yeah, and I guess that could apply to other, other yield losses too. Yeah, exactly. And, and so uh, we, I'll answer by saying that we are aware of this, of this, of uh, the statement made. Uh, we're obviously we're, it's true. Um, I think there's a, we never look at only one type of uh, measure. We look at a suite of measures. And so no-till is one. Crop rotation is another one also. And we, we try, we suggest to our farmers, you have to always remember that we can only suggest because the farmers are still their own, the owners of the land and they own their practices and they own their farm. But what we do is we work with them and say, have you considered this? And we, and, and we, we partner with farmers um, and I'm talking conventional farmers, you know, there's a very, I mean, it's very public, uh, the McCarty fa family in Kansas. Uh, is uh, is very much interested in this, and they they are looking for 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 more sustainable ways of farming, but because they are under cost plus with us, then we can work as a team, and they don't shoulder actually the issue of uh, the risk, because we will shoulder that <laughs> because we're guaranteeing a margin. So the point we're making here is that. Um, Yes, there are certain things that we need to be very careful about. This is why we're progressing very carefully. Uh, number two, uh, there is not one thing that will be a silver bullet. We need a suite of things. And that's why there's no-till, there's crop rotation, there's cover crop, there's a whole, whole slew of things, as I said, and which will help with the reduction of pests and uh, you know, the intrinsic uh, it, that are driven pretty much by monoculture or you know, that's basically what it is. And so hopefully, and then the risk, again, that's the final point is because we shoulder the risk. Uh, and once we know more, then obviously we can apply that to others. Does that, I hope it answers the question. I think so. Thank you, Philippe. I think we have time for one quick response question, then we need to move on to the next speaker. But another question is what has Danone done to educate consumers? So on the opposite side, not the producer side, but the consumer side of the equation. Right. So very quickly, we use B Corp. Uh, so for example, the B Corp uh, logo and as well as some, some language, some very much uh, storytelling on B Corp is on several of our packaging. Um, I mean, definitely Horizon brand, but others, uh, some Danon products, um, et cetera. Um, we definitely, uh, we're extremely vocal about our commitments on climate. We're extremely vocal and encouraging people to uh, to to act. We we say very often you you vote with uh, every day every day you eat and drink or every, with what you buy when you eat and drink you vote with your your dollars for those brands that are really making a difference or trying to make a difference. And has that front of package labeling been a, an effective way? Do you think is that has that been the most effective way for reaching consumers? It depends on the consumers. And some consumers are very engaged, as you all can imagine. But lo lo looking at the IFIC data that I showed at the beginning, if you have 60% of the people who feel that the, the way you know, a food is uh, produced uh, sustainably or not is important, 60%, that's, a, that's, in my view, a big chunk of people. And so that's a good way for us to engage and making sure that, they're, uh, that we're trying to address. And again, it has to be credible and it has to be authentic. And you just mm -hmm. cannot be... That's why I, I spent quite a bit of my presentation on the upfront because that's the foundation and, and not, yeah. not the, it's not just marketers. Well, thank you, Philippe. We, we're at time now for the